Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. And today, finally, we're back on the beach. I know it's been a little while, a few different things going on, and you know, I haven't even done any personal fishing, let alone a bit of filming, but we'll come down to Kessingland today. We're now in the very start of December, and we're out here hopefully trying to catch a few fish. I've sort of hummed and hard a little bit today. I was chatting to Steve about what perhaps we could, you know, come down and do a video on because by all accounts, I don't think, you know, it's a particularly a secret that the, the winter fishing so far has been very, very poor. The codlin that sort of we managed to catch last year haven't really turned up this year. There's probably a whole host of reasons as to why. One perhaps personally for me is that perhaps the sea's been a little bit warm. I think it's been warmer for a longer period of time than what it normally is. And you get your sort of subtle changes like that affect the fish a lot more than probably, you know, we ever know. But there's there's been one thing and I'm sure, you know, they're caught up and down the country in their thousands and that is the whiting and you can rely on them to normally give you a bite when there's nothing else out there to be caught. Now personally for me, I'm not a massive fan of whiting, nothing against them and obviously growing up as a kid you're targeting them and you're catching them, you know, and it's good fun and everyone sort of starts there but for me, I, I, I don't particularly enjoy catching them and, and often when you're spending a lot of money on bait and you're traveling to different beaches and you know, you're putting a, a nice big worm bait out there for hopefully a cod and it's getting snaffled by pin white and it can sometimes be frustrating but unfortunately at the moment it appears and it has done for the past sort of, you know, two or three months they have pretty much been the only species that's you know been given anglers a bite so that got me thinking a little bit and it got me thinking that if they are the only things out there rather than not coming how else could perhaps sort of I enjoy a session and enjoy catching them so it got me thinking a little bit and that is how light could you catch them so how light a tackle could you use to hopefully you know target a few of them and catch a few of them so it got me thinking that that might be a nice idea for a video come down here and see how light we can go so that's the plan today I've actually got four different setups today I've got my normal beach rod I've got a carp rod I've got an Avon rod and I've got a quiver tip rod now as we go through the session I'll talk to you a little bit about each of them the sort of rigs we've got on and the ounce of lead and the brake and strain of line we're using but we're going to start off with my the standard beach caster. Now there's 15 pound line on there, a 50 pound leader, we've got a five ounce lead and I've just got a couple of uh, little snoods coming off with a size one, two hook I think, something like that. So that's what I'm going to start with. Bait of choice is going to be worm, classic blow lug, you know something that I always take with me and we're going to just see today how light we can go. It sort of got me got me thinking really I, I sort of put it into a, a perspective of a course fishing point of view if you had a lake that once contained carp and you fish for the carp on carp rods and you caught roach it, it wouldn't be that much fun so you'd go down there and you might fish for the roach but rather than using carp rods you'd use light and now obviously when you see fish it's a job because you've got a load of different elements you know we've got the tide we've got the sea state you've got the weather everything like that and it, and it can make it difficult which is why we have to normally use such heavy gear but on a day like today we seem to have picked the day well seas nice and calm real gentle breeze and hopefully we might be able to catch them as light as a quiver tip rod that's the plan anyway so what i'll do is i'm going to get this one baited up get it out there and we'll see how we get on well i just put the first rod out there so this is the my standard c setup and one uh, one stipulation of sort of today's challenge or what whatever experiment whatever we want to call it is that we won't move on to the next rod until we're caught on the one we're using so we've got this one out here now hopefully i'd like to get this one out of the way real real quick and i think probably we will do i think there's been that many whiting about that you know we should be able to to catch one nice and early so that's fishing away now what i'm going to do is i'm going get, to get back in that shelter and uh probably think about in my head how the other the other three are going to work but we'll uh, keep an eye on that tip and hopefully we'll be able to report back with a fish and get this one off the off the list well, we had a little uh, little nibble on this rod as i said i didn't i didn't think this one would take particularly long if i'm honest with you because there's uh, certainly been a lot of white and reported 
but it feels a, a little bit of weight there anyway. I'm saying hopefully today we're gonna be able to go a, a lot lighter than this to catch them, but just bringing it in now. That wind's picked up a little bit, which is the only thing that might concern me as we're going down in, in lead and rod size, if you like, is the uh, the wind and the sea state, but we've got a little little whiting on here anyway, so that's 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 a great start. Put that rod there, and I'll uh, I'll show him up to you. But uh, yeah, there we go. So we can take this one off the list, and we'll we'll get back, get the other rod bait. It'll talk to you a little bit about the sort of the tackle we're using on that and how we're going to go about it. But uh, yeah, that's the main thing is to start. So I'll get him unhooked, get him back, and we'll uh, we'll show you a little bit more. Right, so that's the, the first setup and the first rod out of the way, if you like. So we'll move on to the second one. Now the second one, I'm pretty confident this could be quite straightforward as well, to be honest with you. All we've got, we're stepping up or stepping it down a notch and we've just got a, a normal sort of bog standard carp fishing setup, if you like. So it's a lighter rod, this is a three pound test curve and we've just got a, a bait runner reel on there. Now we've got 12 pound line on this, just straight through because I say we're not we're not casting massive distances you don't really need to if I'm honest with you and then on the business end we've got well, yeah, something you'd more associate with probably like chub fishing or something like that but I wanted to try and keep everything as sort of sporting as we can if you like so there's a three ounce lead on here it's ever so simple running rig and I think this is a it's a flat carp lead, which I think should do the job. Designed for fishing in rivers and stuff like that, so it should go all right in the tide, I guess. And it's just got these little uh, ridges on it there, should give you a bit of grip as well. Probably a two foot hook link, something like that. And then a, a small size one, just a single hook, just because it's just gonna, I say, keep things sporting and make it slightly easier for, for casting and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna, I'll bait this up now just while I'm talking to you. We'll just put a couple of worm on it, nice and simple. And then we'll uh, we'll get it out there. It's nice to uh, go off to a start anyway. As I say, I'm hoping this one's not going to be too much of a an issue either. The light line, you can get away with a, a slightly lighter lead. That's what I'm hoping anyway especially when you're, you're fishing close in because you're not in this, the, the main tidal flow if you like. A couple of worms on there, not a not a big bait but we're not after big fish. It's not really about the fishing today, it's more about the method and whatnot but that's ready to go. So we'll lob that out there and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get this one checked off nice and early too. Well, that's the, the first chuck with that one. It didn't quite go to plan. We didn't get a fish on it, but there was a little bit of weed gathering around the, where the line entered the water. So all I've done is, is I've, I've brought it in, took the weed off, and I've just moved the tripod a little bit closer to the, uh, to the water's edge, because the tide's now ebbing, so it's now going out. So we'll probably, as fishing as light as we are, we'll just have to move down each time I think to, to stand a chance of completing the challenge because obviously this, this rod's a little bit shorter than the beach rods and also because you're not casting quite as far your line enters the water closer to you so where them waves are turning over there's a little bit of weed being turned over as well and that just just caught on the line and that'll just hinder bite detection so all I've done say move the, the cups on the tripod up a little bit and move the tripod a little bit closer to the water and hopefully that will that will combat it. So just putting a fresh bait on. It's holding out there perfectly though, and that's that's just standard three ounce lead, so that's not, not a problem at all. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna be able to pull this one off. We just need a, a white to pick up the bait. But we'll get this one back out there anyway, 
and hopefully we'll be able to get this one signed off sooner rather than later too. I think we had a little little nibble on the carp rod, a little inquiry anyway, so we'll give it a look. I feel a bit of weight there, it feels strange fishing with a uh, carp rod and fixed spool reel. I ain't done this for years. But uh, certainly a, a slightly more interesting element than um, you know, drag and whiten him with six ounces of lead trailing behind him. But yeah, it definitely, definitely feels like there's a bit of weight on here. So fingers crossed. It's coming up now, and we have. We've got a slightly different species to show you as well, which is a, uh, which is nice. There we go. So, it's not just whiten that uh, you can catch on slightly lighter tackle. Little flatty there. Another species that's common around our part of the coast. I mean, to be honest with you, even if you could avoid some of the whiten and come out and, and catch a nice bag of these, it would be a little bit more uh, interesting sometimes, but very pretty little fish. Ever so lightly hooked as well, so he'll go back nicely. We'll just nick that. Nick that hook out for you now. One last look. Little uh, hand sized dab. But main thing is put this one away and we'll uh, move on to the next rod. Let's get him back. Well, now it is getting interesting. So that's the first the first two sort of methods and tackle ticked off the list if you like. And when I say interesting, it's because here we've got a standard Avon rod. Now this is a pound and a quarter, so this is very, very light compared obviously to the beach caster and to that carp rod we were using. So whether it's going to work, I don't know, but we'll, we'll give it a go anyway. You could certainly, you got a lot, lot more feeling just landing that little flat fish on the carp rod than what you know you would do if you're using you know the standard beach caster. But this here, we've got another bait runner reel, not that it matters at all, but it's a little fixed bull reel. And on here, we've got 10 pound lines. We've come down again. So we started at 15, went to 12 on the carp rod, and now we've got 10 pound. We've got exactly the same rig. The only difference is this time, is rather than using a three ounce lead, we've got a two ounce lead. So we've come down slightly lighter in size. Again, the rig, exactly the same length, and exactly the same sized hook. So what this is gonna do, I don't know, but we'll get a we'll get a couple of worms on it and get it out there. I mean even um even if the lead doesn't hold it's not too much of a problem. Long as you can get it fishing for I don't know 10 minutes or so you're you're in with a chance of a fish. Now obviously you know you can buy rolling leads for sea fishing and you know you can a bit of movement sometimes in your bait doesn't do any harm especially you know for particularly flat fish but I mean all species really perhaps if you're you know out there targeting cod you want it fixed to the fix the deck but with um, you know the smaller species they'll they'll happily sort of move around for the bait and you can sometimes cover a bit of ground so it might be that if you know if this one does move 10 15 20 yards or whatever you might find it drops in a little gully or you know a little bed of I don't know worm or shrimp or something like that where the fish are waiting so it's not a it's not the end of the world but to be fair as I said we haven't got a massive massive tide today it's quite a small tide so it's not posing too much of a problem but there's the bait a couple of little worms on there on the small hook we'll uh, get it out there and see what happened because I am um, I really don't know to be honest with you, but let's see how we get on. Well, I'll just let it have a, a little bit of line, cast it a little way up tide. As I say, it's ebbing now, so it's going from right to left. Put it up tide a little bit, so if it does roll round, it's gonna it's gonna follow the tide round, and I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure. Well, I'm hoping it's gonna settle somewhere and. Uh, we might be able to nick another fish on it and, and move on to the next one, but uh, a little bit excited now, so we'll see what happens.
Well, we just had a little nibble on the Avon rod, so we thought we'd give it a little look. It's definitely just picking up. There's definitely a bit of weight there. There's been a little bit of weed in the water, but uh, nothing too major. And I think we might be attached to a fish. It's a little bit of a, a bend in the rod. I definitely feel something on there. So fingers crossed we'll then be able to, to move on to the, the final rod, if you like. Well, we have gone and done it. We've got another little white in here. I'll just bring them in and show you. And that, that's the third rod and the third set of tackle of the day. Show them up to you. Now here's a micro, micro white in, but you see the, the small look there and the worm hanging out of his mouth. And I'll bring, I'll bring the lead in so you can see we're not, we're not lying to you. That's a two ounce lead there, pound and a quarter even rod. And as I say, the third setup of the day. So what we'll do is now, is we'll unhook him, we'll get him back, and then we'll uh, show you a little bit more about the fourth and final, final rod and final experiment we've got of the day. But let's get him back. Well, so we're now on to the, the fourth and final rod of the day and set a tackle of the day. And here we've got, an old quiver tip rod. It's a, uh, a rod we actually use for chubbing, believe it or not. I managed to borrow it off Steve and we'll give it a go. Very, very, very lightweight. Well, compared to your, you know, conventional beach rods and to the other two setups we've been using. A normal uh, standard fixed spool reel on there, nothing special. And then what we have got is we've got eight pound line on this, so which is very, very light and over half what we started with, obviously, nearly on the 15 pound line on the beach caster. Again, the rig's the same, just a little run and ledge rig. Hook link's the same, hook is the same. The only difference is, this time, we're gonna try and get away with a one ounce lead. Hopefully with the, uh, the tide run, obviously the thing that catches in the tide is, is your line. So if you're using thicker line, you generally need a heavier ounce of lead to hold bottom because the resistance of the diameter of the mono pick, picks up in the tide and that's what uh, that's what will pull your lead out. So often the case, if you lower your line size down, you can get away with a, uh, a smaller lead. But what we'll do is we'll bait this up. What's gonna happen, I do not know, but I'm, I'm sort of pretty sure that if uh, we do manage to catch a fish on it, I think it could be the, uh, the first time that a whiting or a sea fish has ever been caught from an open beach on a quiver tip rod, but we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on. I'm pretty sure it's the first time it'll ever been captured on film anyway, but let's, uh, let's see. The tide is, uh, is well into the, the ebb now, so it's, um, it slowed down a little bit. It did. It 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 picked up a little bit just as it turned, but we've still uh, managed to hold out there. And more importantly, we've still managed to catch fish on all on all setups. So I've gone a slightly larger bait. There's three worms on there, but they're fairly small. And just the reason for that is because I'm only using the one hook, and it's not a panel setup. I like to get a bit of a uh, attraction in the water. We're obviously only using one rod as well. Whereas if I was using you know, two rods, you got another another set of baits out there putting some scent in the water, but just neating it up a little bit. Nip that tail off. And we'll uh, give you a little look. So hopefully that, uh, the one ounce lead might catch the fish and uh, do something, see something rather interesting. But we'll see what we can do anyway. We'll flick it out there. We're only gonna be going out I don't know we're, we're not going to be going out very far anyway with this tackle but uh, should be far, far enough to put us in the chance for fish so let's see how we get on Well, that was actually a bit, uh, a bit like feeder fishing. I was just standing down there watching the, uh, wa watching the tip, and it's uh, sprung over. And I think there's gonna, uh, there's gonna be another little whiting on here. It's literally first chuck. But uh, 
Yeah, a bit more weed again, but nothing, nothing too major. <laughs> we have gone and got something. Just walk down. Let's see, what is it? A white hing. So there you go. That is a. Uh... <laughs> now I'm not being funny. That's not a. Uh... Not going to be much of a catch when you've got six ounces of lead, 15 pound line, a 50 pound shock leader. But when you're uh, you're catching on a feeder rod, one ounce of lead, eight pound line. That uh, is a little bit more more special, should I say? But that's the uh, challenge complete, I guess. That's a, that's a fish on every every setup that we used, and uh, I don't think there'd be too many people arguing if I was to say, is that the first? whiten caught on a feeder fishing rod on film in the UK who knows from an open beach anyway I know people use them like light lines and stuff in estuaries but uh, yeah I'm certainly chuffed with that we'll uh, slip that hook out we'll get him back I do hope you've enjoyed it anyway as much as sort of I have fishing it it's something a little bit different so as always thanks for watching be lucky and we'll see you again on the next one